Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I'm spiritual coach Lisa Hopp. It is Sunday, March 8th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me, especially if you come back every week and listen to my podcast and for all the positive feedback that you give me. It matters to me so much. I tell you this every week, but it matters more than you realize. And to all of you who have come on new today, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Please be sure to check out my website at lisahop.com. That's L-I-S-A-H-O-P-P.com. I also have a Facebook business page, which is under Spiritual Coach Lisa Hop. And you may be catching this on YouTube, but if not, please check out my YouTube channel, also under Lisa Hop. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I am actually running a little bit late with the podcast today. It is such a cliche, I suppose, (laughs) but um, I am coming to you uh, from the mid-Atlantic coast of America, and we sprung forward our clocks last night, and mm -hmm, I needed the extra hour. (laughs) I actually overslept. (laughs) And then I had to race to breakfast with my son, which we tried to do most Sunday mornings. And so it put me a little bit behind, but here I am. And I'm very, very happy to be with you today. So I want to address today, as you, um, some of you know, I come up with my topic quite late um, before I before I broadcast. Usually it's like a half an hour out before, but this, this one, I, I, I did come to the realization and knowing of it during this week. And I say this, the, the topic basically is, do you understand, do you know how great you are and that you actually are made in the image and likeness of creation. You are enormous, magnificent, unlimited ball of energy, as am I. And we decide to inhabit this shell of a body that has all these senses, all these physical senses, all the ego, all the feelings. We inhabit it because it gives us the opportunity to explore our own growth and creation in a larger way because we have to overcome the emotions and the obstacles and the fears and the teachings that are given to us from the moment we arrive. All those teachings that tell us that we are limited, that we are sinners in some respects if you are part of traditional religion. And other limiting beliefs that we are taught. And those around us, even though they they certainly don't mean it a lot of the time, they start before we can even speak, before we are, as we are growing, as we are coming into ourselves, they start programming us and speaking to us and telling us what we should believe about ourselves and what we should believe about our world. And here's the important thing, here's really the topic, is that you really are pure greatness and that all of us are equally great. We are all, every single one of us, made in that image of that divine source. Unstoppable, unlimited. I'm going to say this over and over again today. And yes, some of us, even though we are all made the same, with the same insides, the same materials, the same abilities really to achieve whatever we want to achieve because of the power, the extraordinary power of our mind. Yes, some do come perhaps into a richer family. Some come into a more challenged family. Some are given away at birth. Some have to overcome physical limitations. And so we're not always given perhaps in a physical sense an even playing field. But in a metaphysical sense, in a spiritual sense, in a mind sense, 
we're all the same. And in the sense of how we are loved by that spiritual creation, by that spiritual source, which you can know as God or source or Allah or Yahweh or Jesus, however you want to know that source. That source loves all of us the same. I like to see it, and it is much like a perfect parent that is unconditionally loving. No matter what your sibling does, loves that sibling just as much as you. And for some of you with siblings, I bet you that's really annoying. <laughs> that they can never do anything wrong and you're perfect. <laughs> Might be a little autobiographical there. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> and so it's important for you to know that not from a negative sense in that no matter what's, what somebody else is like, no matter what they do wrong, they're still the same. No, I want you to take it as a validation of how magnificent and wonderful you are. And I want you to take it as a tool of empowerment to not stop yourself. I want you to live like that great champion, not stopping yourself, not limiting yourself, not keeping yourself down in any way. Allow yourself, champion yourself to overcome the prior programming, the early programming overcome the emotions and blocks that we all have. Every single human being on this earth walks around with scars. It, it, honestly, I'm sure even the Dalai Lama has them. But we all have the capacity to overcome. And you have complete power in your hands to create the life you desire. We all do. And I can know, I know personally, because I was given the great blessing and gift of knowing, I know that I was brought here to be a spiritual teacher. And the spiritual teacher in me always wants to tell every single human being that crosses my path how divine and magnificent and unlimited they are and not to hold back. And I have to say, like a good teacher, I do get torn up <laughs> a bit inside when I see someone with great potential that isn't using it, or I hear someone talking with limited beliefs. I can't do that. I can't afford to do that. I don't know how. You don't have to know how. Just believe and have faith. And it doesn't mean you have to agree to do something right away. Just never give up the knowing and the belief that if you really want something, it can always and should always work out on your behalf. And the only reason why we're not all walking around here as billionaires is that we don't know that we are unlimited enough to have that. We hold ourselves back by our limiting beliefs and our own behaviors. It's not our fault. We're just always, a lot of us working on autopilot. And so, for instance, if you were raised with a family, with a very hardworking parent that went off to a nine to five job, you're going to follow in their footsteps unless there's some part of you that decides to believe in your own thoughts and beliefs and knowings, to follow your own path. But more often than not, it's likely we just follow what we know. I know many people that live in the same town they were born into. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. They have a comfort level there. They're following what they know and setting up their own lives in that comfort zone. That's fine as long as they're happy. But how much, how many of us are really as happy as we want to be? If you are listening to my broadcast today 
and you're not completely happy, you have the power within yourself to begin to change that. There is nothing stopping you except your own perceptions. If your perceptions tell you that only the greedy win, that's going to hold you back. If your perceptions tell you that means you have to get a degree in order to earn more income, that's a perception holding you back. Because find out, a lot of our billionaires don't have college degrees. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get a college degree. I'm just saying they were not held back by rules, by beliefs, by societal beliefs. They live life according to their own terms. And you're supposed to as well. You can begin with baby steps. Whatever that may mean for you to give you a sense of empowerment. If it, if, if giving yourself a sense of empowerment means that you take a walk a mile a day, begin If a sense of empowerment means that you can't take one course at a community college, begin. Whatever it may mean to you, it is within your own mind and your own power to become all that you desire to be. And that is not in any way a bad thing. It is very, it is very, Secure and relieving for me to know that my life is in my hands and that any excuses I have are completely mine and I can overcome them. There's no feeling like it. And most successful, all successful entrepreneurs have it. That feeling of my success is in my hands. I can make it what I want. Oh, that's so powerful. And so if you, by the way, are not an and if you are not an entrepreneur, by the way, you can still feel it. Walk into your work. Be in the present moment. Give 100%. And keep your eye out for what makes you feel more empowered or powerful if it means doing a vocation for yourself after work or on weekends if it means going for it at work knowing you have nothing to lose and if you believe in yourself anything is possible do it I cheer you on one of the great reminders of this that I got recently And it can be taken another way, what I'm about to tell you. I have a story. (laughs) And my, my confession in my story is I have a bit of a guilty pleasure lately. A win late at night when I'm too tired to work, but I'm too awake to sleep. We've all been there, right? I usually would go on YouTube and I will watch some great videos, some of them from my peers. Um, I have a favorite one that talks about Tudor history. It's this day in Tudor history, and I love learning about that time period. But I recently accidentally discovered a great guilty pleasure, and that is, it is a YouTube channel card called Hollywood Graveyard. (laughs) Now that would seem very um, morbid or macabre to have a guilty pleasure called Hollywood Graveyard, but it actually has inspired me because the the purpose of this channel is to basically visit around around the world, um, but starting with Hollywood a few years ago, visiting the grave sites of celebrities, um, famous writers, um, cartoonists, 
uh, philosophers, anyone who has who has made a difference in some way or is, or who maybe is a Hollywood um, celebrity. And it's so interesting because, well, I love it because uh, the the head of the channel, the the narrator, he not only brings us to the person's grave or where their ashes were scattered, but he gives a little biopic about them. He tells you about them. And it's, it's, I'm so grateful for that because I've gotten to know about silent film stories that were before my time. And sometimes I'm not aware of someone's past. So I also not only get to find out, but I also get to learn about them. So it's a, a little bit of an education, but also why it inspired me about this topic today is that it really amazed me how simple, or I want to say how normal, most of these grave sites were. It brought home to me how much we're really all the same. And our birth is the same. We all have to birth a certain way. And when we come from dust and we go back to dust, and it doesn't matter how rich you are or how famous you are, you are still really just as great as another human being at the end of your life. And my example of this is some of the most famous celebrities, such as Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra for those of you young, he's <laughs> he's uh, old blue eyes. He basically built Las Vegas with his rack pack act. Um, he has a very normal gravestone out in Palm Springs, the same type of uh, stone that my grandparents have down the road. And it just has a Francis Albert Sinatra on it. There's no great symbols on it. It's it's just granite. You know, it's um it's if you didn't know it was there, you would pass right by it. There's no sign going, Hey, or blue eyes is here, there's no neon, you know, um there's not even really a lot of flowers or anything on it. It's it's just so simple. And George C. Scott, Oscar winner for Patton, Scrooge, one of the best Scrooges. He has a stone, but his name isn't even on it. But yet, he has a normal spot with flowers around it. So if you didn't know he was there, you would just walk right on by him. But a lot of people who we consider celebrities have little glass niches in mausoleums. It's almost like little curio shelves. Very small, very simple. Or maybe they have a little drawer in the mausoleum or a little square spot that's made of marble. But I know loved ones whose parents had the same type of thing. So it struck me. It struck me because, yes, there are a couple. There are a couple that live up to their celebrity status. For instance, Bob Hope. (laughs) You have to pay admission to see Bob Hope's grave. Now, young ones, before my time too, he was. But he was a famous comedian that hosted the Oscars and used to go to see the troops during World War II in Vietnam and I'm sure Korea as well. And he would entertain them and he is an icon. So in order to see his grave out in California, he is, actually has a very, like an alcove type of grave for him and his wife. A very, very... um beautiful but in order to see that visit that grave you um he is he is housed actually at the back garden of the san fernando mission and which is a catholic mission so you have to go into the gift shop which is like a museum to him pay admission go out to the garden area and see him and so um that's that's not to say we should expect that with all celebrities, but it was, that is, um, <laughs> I had to do a giggle about, because I, why I'm giggling about it is that before he passed, he, he died like almost a hundred, around a hundred. He said to his loved one, surprise me. So I wonder how surprised he is that people have to charge, have to pay admission to see him. 
but it is towards the mission. So it's not like it's going, I don't think it, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me to go towards the Hope family, but, um, I just wonder if he's surprised. <laughs> um, Karen Carpenter, we've only just begun top of the world, rainy days and Mondays would be 70 now. Oh, believe, unbelievably 70 now her family has what I like to call a house it's a vault now it's it's pretty um beautiful and the whole family is housed in there that have passed except for her brother hasn't passed but her parents and her are in there but that would be something that we would expect but most people have little drawers little glass niches and little stone graves um that are just normal as I said um, even Whitney Houston, she has music symbols on her grave, but um, it's just a normal graveyard. You know, there's um, somewhere you'd hidden away. There's an actor that uh, Montgomery Clift, from here to eternity, died just in his 40s. He's literally in a hidden woods in Brooklyn. You can't even drive back there. You wouldn't see it from the road. But he has a very normal gravestone back there. And so... Um, it just amazed me of how, no matter how great, how neon, how famous, how much, how many red carpets they walk down, how rich they are. At the end of their lives, they were the same as you and me. The same as you and me. You know? And there's a truth to that. There's just a truth to that. They are. Many people who become celebrities are rich. Yes, some are born into it, but then they have choices about what they do with it. And if you don't use it wisely or for the greater good, you tend to lose it. Um, but those that do become stars will always tell you, yes, they worked hard. But also, their belief system was involved. They manifested it. They never stopped believing. And that's the key. Those who aren't successful, honestly, stop believing. Tend to quit. But they quit because they stop believing. You have to love what you do. You have to love who you are. And you have to believe. You have to want to do it for nothing. And then get massively surprised when you're getting something for it. And that's important to keep in mind. It really is. Remember how powerful you are. So today, today. If you're in an, a job that you t don't like, that's burning you out, that you're tired, what would you do if you could? Because you can say, I have to be there because of health insurance. Or, I have to be there because I have bills to pay. Okay, for right now, we can have that mindset. But can you just a little bit, just a little bit, take just an ounce of your time and allocate it over to that knowing and that belief and that truth that you are powerful and that you can choose and you can you can put that over to what you want meaning that just give a little bit of your time to what would I do if I could and then set about getting it done in baby steps, in giving gratitude for it. Because once you ask for something, it's trying to arrive. So give gratitude for having received it. So instead of giving your all of yourself to your physical reality, allocate 25% of yourself or more to what you know is truth, even if you don't see it in a physical reality. So put the money aside for the trip each month. 
learn on the internet a vocation you really want to do. Give a half an hour a day to exercise. Always stay open for the greater opportunity, the greater job. Because there's never anything wrong with upgrading, even if your employer has been kind to you. You're always allowed to give more to yourself. So what I'm saying is be willing to peek outside the box. And maybe you can't see how or when, but it's possible. It's always possible. And if you believe enough and are willing not to quit on it, it's probable. Now, when I tell you that we're all magnificent and we're all unlimited, we all have gifts. And there's a uniqueness to our gifts. So never, ever judge yourself comparing yourself to another because you have gifts they don't have. You're unique. You're literally like a snowflake. (laughs) You are your own fingerprint. And maybe somebody else is a wonderful singer. I can't sing like Celine Dion on her best day. But it is very possible that Celine Dion doesn't have some of the gifts that I have. So I'm always working on being the best Lisa, honing my gifts, honing who I am to be the best version of me. We're not supposed to be duplicates of each other. We're supposed to stand apart. And that's so very important to know and to live like that. When you walk around this earth, there is nobody else like you, even if we look like each other sometimes. There's absolutely nobody else like you. Nobody else that can give what you give. Nobody else that can love the way you love. Nobody else that has the power to manifest your life except you. That is so important. Own your greatness. Own your importance, your value, your unlimitedness. Don't let a boss hold you back. Don't let a mortgage company hold you back from believing that. You would be amazed at how powerful your belief system is. If you go about this earth working, paying your bills, just Even when you go through struggles, if you're struggling right now in any way, whether it be financially or health or in relationships, if you can make it through all of that, but still hold on to belief that the tide is turning and you will have more than you can imagine, you will see evidence that the tide is turning. Beliefs are so strong and so powerful. And most of us walk around with the ones that hold us back. Actually, a lot of us walk around with ones that are wrong, to be honest, that don't that aren't basis based in truth. But today I tell you a strong truth. A belief that you should have. And that is your power and your greatness. And your ability to imagine and create the life that you truly wish for. Raise your bar. Shoot for the stars. 
ask for your invisible helpers to help you. Limit yourself from exposure to people that don't share your beliefs. If you have to, don't talk about them. Just know them. But also try to surround yourself with people that support you in them. If you want to travel the world, get some world travelers around you. If you want to become a scientist, create a bubble of scientists around you or people interested in science. If you want to be more spiritual, get yourself around like-minded friends. Perhaps join a spiritual gathering or a church. Go to a spiritual center. Take workshops. Become what you want to be and who you truly are. If you want financial freedom, feel the desire first and then the knowing that that can come. Just the knowing that it can come is enough to get started. And then allow yourself to be inspired to make changes. It can happen. It's why we're here to work it all out. And to do it with love and joy and happiness. Give it a try. Just out of hope. Because hope is also a great, great engine to acquiring your ideal life. Thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful Sunday here on the East Coast of America. I want to say something briefly as well. (sighs) When I was at breakfast today with my son, we actually were served our breakfast in paper bags. We were told we could not receive our breakfast on a plate because of the coronavirus. (laughs) Um, I don't know about that. I think that might have been a slight overreaction, especially since the bathrooms didn't even have any anti, you know, anti, um, what's that, antiseptic stuff. Um, you think they would have put it there, right? I see a lot of posts on social media about an overreaction to the virus, And blaming the media and such. And I would say there is an overreaction and there's an underreaction. The reaction is to use common sense. Wash your hands. Think about decisions that you make using that common sense, such as travel. Um, There is no need for paranoia, but there's also we shouldn't blow it off. Because it is spreading. And it is an opportunity for change. Because great, another great reminder of how we're all the same is the equalizer of natural disasters and health. Those two things don't judge how wealthy you are what the color of your skin is, how good a person you are, it doesn't matter. So be informed, use common sense, pray for help, and we can get through this as one together as well as anything else that confronts us. And that's really what it's all about. Is to teach us and to help us to come together as one. 
I'll conclude my podcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm grateful for all of you. I have much love for you all. Please be sure to, if you liked this, to share it, to like, to subscribe. The greater the audience, the more good changes that can come. Um, And it's just good to serve. And so if it serves you, I appreciate your feedback. Please let you let me know. And I'm grateful. I'm just grateful for all of you. Thank you. And have a wonderful and blessed day.